Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for a little bit today. Got some on the bed. Today's video was so challenging. You clicked on it. Ranking 15 eyeshadow formulas. This is something I've never done before. This is a collab video and I am so excited to collaborate with I Am Jamila. That is her channel name. I'll talk more about her after the intro. If makeup is your therapy, if it makes you happy, if it's your escape, and if you really, really, really love eyeshadow, definitely consider subscribing and joining the community because I would love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So Jammy, as I call her, her channel is I am Jamila. Okay, first of all, she creates some bomb eyeshadow looks and she's so good about posting them on Instagram. I'm like not great with that. She really likes finding makeup on sale, unlike me, but I am getting better. Please check out her channel. If you are not subscribed, you will love her. She has a great personality. And you know, just on this YouTube journey, she's someone that has come along the way. I'm glad to call her a friend. Check her out, you will fall in love. And she's so cute, like she is super cute. You should be seeing some pictures of her. Okay, she reached out to me and she asked me, would I be interested in an eyeshadow formula ranking video? Of course I said yes. When I sat and thought about it, I realized I definitely have eyeshadow formulas that I'm not crazy about. I have some that I really like and then everything else kind of falls in the middle. But what you're gonna see in this ranking is that some of my favorite brands are at the bottom of the list. Which is crazy because I guess me being such an eyeshadow enthusiast, I don't really mind the work. Like I don't mind that like this brand I have to work with eyeshadows this way and this brand I have to work with it this way and this brand just blends itself. I just know how to work with certain formulas and I think the only thing that really turns me off from a brand is when I'm putting it on my eye if it doesn't feel good. That's what makes an eyeshadow formula not so great. We have 10 brands that are the same and five brands that aren't and for each of these brands we have used more than one palette so when i think about a good eyeshadow formula i one think about the consistency between palettes some brands may come out with a palette that's great and then the next one is like ah the formula's not the same so you can't like blindly buy all of the palettes because the formula is different the other thing i look at is the pigmentation like do i have to build up a lot of the shadows in order to get the level of pigment and richness and depth that I want to have. Oh, duh, blendability. So how do the shadows blend? Can you layer the shadows? When you layer them, does it start to blend away? Is it patchy? The last thing I thought about is how user friendly is the eyeshadow formula? Could a beginner use this eyeshadow or is it more for an intermediate level eyeshadow user or an expert eyeshadow user? So those are the things that I look at when I think about eyeshadow formulas. So for this video, I'm gonna start with number 15 and then I'm gonna go to number one and you will see what my favorite eyeshadow formula is. This is subject to change at any time. Let me know how you feel about my choices down in the comments. Let me know whether you agree or disagree and let's go ahead and get started so I don't hold y'all too long. When you're done watching this video, please make sure you check out Jammies. This was her idea and she is just a great asset to YouTube and to the beauty community. So please check her out. I will have her video in the description box and her channel linked in the cards. All right, let's go. All right, starting with number 15. And don't say nothing, y'all, because this is a no judgment zone as well as a safe space. So, 15 is Give Me Glow. I had to. The shimmer is amazing, okay? So, Vintage Rose palette that I have raved about. Y'all have heard me talk about Vintage Rose. I mean, the quality of these shimmers is fantastical okay love it this is the christmas morning palette gorgeous darling beautiful palette i can't see however the mattes are so scratchy i don't understand they're so scratchy and i think it's like that because 
I think these are pigments and not necessarily eyeshadows. I don't like the way it feels on my fingers or when I'm putting it on. It's just not practical. It's like, no, um, they're, they're scratchy. I don't know what it is. I've tried different brushes. I just don't like the experience of putting on these shadows. In addition to the mattes being a in addition to the mattes being a tad scratchy, these shimmers can be flaky because they're so very pigmented. This is one of the brands where you have to work with the shadows a certain way. Now you can see that these mattes have pigment, so that's not what I'm even talking about. I do have a blue shade by them where I remember putting it on and it was just so chalky and patchy. It's just like, with that being said, knowing how these shadows work, will I continue to buy from Give Me Glow? It would have to be a color story that I really, really, really like. Not my favorite formula to work with, and I realize that I don't grab for my Give Me Glow palettes at all. But you know, once you get the look on, it looks bomb. I'm not saying that, but it's are you hungry lunch. for lunch? What? Are you hungry for lunch? No, but it's not. Now they doing something where you press it and you shoot up in the air and I swear it's hitting something glass, but maybe it's just me. This is just a bit chalky and it just reminds me of chalk. I don't know what to say. I will say that that formula is consistent between all the palettes I have. And I don't think that it's super user friendly, not for someone that's new to eyeshadow. All right, moving on. Don't, cause I already know it's about to be an issue. Number 14, Tom Ford. Listen, I have sold all of my Tom Ford quads, but these three. This is the one I was mentioning in another video that I had. It's called Frostfire. I kept calling it Winter Frost. So Frostfire is just, I think, one of the most unique quads that he has. Those are the shades right there. Now this matte lavender shade, I get that you can't see that, but these are really beautiful. This is like a topper. Then you've got these uh, two very sparkly metallics. They are very pretty. The other quad that I have is white suede. I, I This one, I just, I just, I couldn't even sell this because I just would feel like I was not a good person in my soul. Um, that's it right here. And you know, I swatch, like I'm being generous with my swatches. I mean, this is like nothing to me. I hate to say it. I also have Photosynthesex, which is a discontinued one, which I think I purchased for $39. So those are the shades from Photosynthesex. I really love this uh, dual chrome shade here. That's very nice. I love the pigmentation on this quad and this one, but this one, the pigmentation between palettes is not very consistent in my opinion for what my taste is and what I like. Like with this one, it would be too much work for me to get this to the level that I need it to be for eyeshadow looks that I like. And I, I do some bold looks, but y'all see, I have on like a neutral look. This is the Melt Brunette palette. I like neutral stuff too, but I need to be able to see it. And I can barely see this. So that's why Tom Ford is number 14. Number 13, this breaks my whole heart because this is one of my top five favorite brands in life, can do no wrong, don't care, I don't care what anybody says. Number 13 is Melt. This really hurts my soul, it does. But the reason that Melt has to be number 14 on this ranking list is because their palettes are inconsistent. It's very hard for me to recommend a Melt palette because I don't know what you're gonna get. It's like the lottery, you know what I mean? You don't know. Like, is it gonna be good? Is it gonna be bad? Is it gonna be crumbly? Is it gonna be smooth? Like, you just don't know what to get with Melt. But Melt is one of those unique brands that I absolutely adore and will probably continue to collect because I don't mind learning how to work with their formulas because there's so many other things that I enjoy about Melt, i.e. their grungy color stories. And even with this brunette palette, which I kind of talked about at first, I absolutely love this look. This, right? I have to do a review on that. So a lot of people 
did not enjoy the Mary Jane palette. And there were several reasons why. Now the mattes in Mary Jane, bomb. Some of the shimmers are amazing in this palette, but then some of the shimmers are not and they are crumbly. So, you know, with this palette, even within the palette, the shimmers are not consistent. The mattes in this palette are so smooth. They're very pigmented. They're very grungy. Again, some of the shimmers, amazing. This Sweet Lucy shade, uh, Bamba, Santa Maria. These shimmers I think are excellent. And here they are. Love, 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 especially this one right here. These outer two, uh, Mary Jane and Callie, that's where there was kind of an issue where you might have had to work a bit, depending on whether or not you're using a finger or a brush would really determine how that shimmer is gonna show up on you. Just like the 420 palette, which I actually like. Those mattes people didn't like because those mattes were blending away. Whereas in this palette didn't have that issue with the mattes. Actually, I have not had an issue with any of their mattes blending away because Melt is what I call a pat pat brand. You pat the mattes in, then you kind of do that windshield thing. You just pat it on in. Now, if you don't want to do that, and you just want to have it your way and put the eyeshadows on the way you like, I, I can see why somebody would not enjoy that formula because it's your eyes and your eyeshadow and you should be able to put it on the way that you want. Some people don't want to be adjusting their technique and strategy you know, based on the brand. This is my favorite melt palette. This is the Rust palette. This one and Blueprint, I think are, and she's in parties. They, they are so good. Like the mattes and the shimmers in Rust are just amazing, amazing, okay? That's one of my favorite shades. The shimmers are good. They're smooth and soft. They, there's none of those uh, crumbly shimmers in this palette. Not a one, not a one. I don't know why Melt is not making all of their palettes just like this one. If you want to try Melt and you're like, I heard so many things, I heard they're inconsistent. I promise you, you will love the Rust palette. Mm -hmm. I love you. But they're still number 14. Now, this is where things get a little tricky for me because a lot of these brands that I'm about to mention are excellent and I just had to rank them somewhere. Well, I hate to say this for number 12, but number 12 is Huda Beauty. I had to put it somewhere y'all. I love Huda Beauty. I really, really do. Blendability is good. I think the consistency between palettes is good. She does offer, you know, a variety of textures. She has the shimmers, the satin, she has mattes. She has, um, she has glitter in some of the palettes. And then in the Naughty Nudes palette, there was uh, like a cream formula and then that Petri dish formula. So she's got the variety there with the, the shades. I think her mattes work nicely. I think they blend very well. The shimmers are okay. I have just started to like really sparkly or really kind of pigmented shimmers. So this palette, like this khaki haze, this is a great everyday palette. It provides a beautiful look. I have not had any issues with my Huda Beauty palettes at all. Maybe because it's not a standout is why it's ranking where it does. This is the Desert Dusk palette. This is a gorgeous palette. And she even has, I don't know why that feels like that. But as you can see, I don't feel like the shimmers are standing out. Even these Tom Ford shimmers are standing out more than the Huda Beauty shimmers. Like this one's really nice, you know what I mean? I just think I have brands whose eyeshadows I enjoy better that I'm not having to, you know, build up anything with, so.
that's Huda. I'm still so mad about my mic being out, y'all. Brand number 11 goes to ColourPop. Now, I would consider ColourPop to be a very, very user-friendly brand. Um, this was like, as somebody said, I can't remember. This was like my gateway brand, you know, because they're super affordable. They come out with lots and lots of collections. And again, they have sales, so, and they're cute, you know, so. ColourPop, I really don't have much of an issue with, with ColourPop at all. And I'm actually liking ColourPop a bit more because they stopped including the pressed glitter, which is one thing that I really don't care for. Like this is one of my favorite ColourPop palettes, the Anna and Elsa collection. And just the shades in this palette are just beautiful. They have very nice shimmers. Their mattes blend well. They do have mattes that have this glitter in it that, I mean, never really shows up on the eye, but I think sometimes we get put off by ColourPop because of the amount of releases and people don't focus so much on quality, but I have heard people say they like certain palettes better than others. It's not like a sure thing with each palette. I really don't have too much to say about ColourPop. I can't say that they're like a standout brand. That's why ColourPop kind of falls in the middle. But as far as the pigmentation and again, user friendliness, it's there. As far as the blendability of the eyeshadow shades, don't have a problem with it at all. Their shimmers don't really stand out to me as like, a shimmer for me that I'm like, oh my God, but they're really nice shimmers. So that's that's what I can say about ColourPop. Easy to use and um, lots and lots of collections though. And I think the palettes that I have, have been pretty consistent. And again, I am liking that the pressed glitters are, I'm starting to see them less, but you know, then they'll come out with a quad and one of them is a pressed glitter. And I'm like, ColourPop, why, why, why? You don't need that. That's why they had to go at number 11, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so brand number 10. I know we're gonna have some discrepancy here. Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury is a luxury brand and I think they make beautiful, beautiful shadows. If I had to rank brands on user friendliness, this one would probably be close to number one, if not number one. Uh, the reason that I say that is because on all of her eyeshadows, there are directions for how to use the shades. This is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize palette, and you see the one, two, and three. So the one is for priming, the two is for enhancing, and the three is for smoking out the eyeshadow shades. And then all of the shades are labeled. So you see all of her palettes are like that, and I think that makes the eyeshadows super friendly because you already have pre-designed looks but you don't have to have pre-designed looks you know what i'm saying the same thing goes for the eyeshadow quads there's the one two three and four now as far as the formula i know at one point charlotte tilbury did reformulate her mattes so if you like some of the older quads I don't think the mattes are as good as the newer quads. Then she came out with this Fire Rose quad, which only came out one time. And the special thing about this quad was that there was this pop shade. So this is it right here. I think compared to her other shimmers, this pop shade for most people was like, what? Like people were really into the pop shade and are still wondering when she will bring out this quad again. Now, I don't know if her recent quads have pop shades in them, but I think all of her quads should have it. And I'm not even saying that this shimmer is as great as some of my really, really good shimmers, but for Charlotte Tilbury, I think this was one of her best. I am just, probably getting a little more picky now because I have experienced so many brands. But as far as blendability, I think her mattes, the ones that I've tried, blend very nicely. You can do some nice looks. And I think as far as the consistency between the palettes is definitely there except for those older ones, I guess. And I don't even know if those mattes were that bad. I wasn't buying Charlotte Tilbury then and it's not a brand that I go to a lot 
But again, I really enjoy the fact that she has the pre-designed look. So if you want to do a date look, she's got a look there. You want to do a, a day look, a, a night look, a dream look or whatever pillow talk look. She's got all that and it's there. It's easy. I just think it's totally user friendly, but I do wish that she had more of these shimmers in her palettes. So that's why Miss CT is at number 10. Number nine is going to go to BH Cosmetics. I feel like they have been on a winning streak for the past year, but all of the palettes that I have from BH Cosmetics have been really great quality. These Sweet Shop palettes, I think, and I've mentioned these, I have a whole little playlist on these. I just love these so much. The quality of the shimmers are just beautiful. And I always pull out orange sorbet because that's my favorite Sweet Shop. But the shimmer quality is amazing. And so are the mattes. They're, they're pigmented, they blend really well. I don't have a problem with the colors lasting. Blueberry Muffin was a great palette, Avocado Toast. I mean, these shades are just, they're really, really nice. BH is so affordable. Look at that. So when I think about like the Charlotte Tilbury shimmer is just, I don't know, and the Huda ones, they're just a bit dull to me. Whereas this one, you can just see that shine there without even having to build it up. And I like that. When I buy a BH Cosmetics palette, I am expecting a certain amount of quality. I think BH is a user-friendly brand as well. So yeah, that's what I think about BH. I think they're kind of underrated. So number eight, this is cheating a little bit, but I could not, choose between the two. Can I have a, one more time? Yeah, one more. Okay. So number eight is gonna go to Nomad Cosmetics and Juvia's Place. Now here's the thing, and I was talking to Jamie about this. For some reason, I don't go for my Juvia's Place palettes a lot. But one thing I will say is I've had a fair amount of Juvia's Place palettes and they're excellent. They, they really are, every single one. So here we have Wahala 2. The fact that they snuck these dual chromes in here and just didn't want to tell anybody, we just gonna go ahead and just charge y'all $40, but we have two dual chromes in here. So not sure if you can see it, but this is that dual chrome that flips green. And then this one is flipping like a uh, teal purple. Their regular metallic shimmers are also very beautiful. You don't need to build them up, they have a lot of pigment. I think there's a duo chrome. There's a duo chrome in Wahala one as well. But look at that, you guys. I mean, so not sure. I think you can see the color flip a little bit better now. But you know, just to have those shades just kind of sneak up on you in the palette. I just think they have a beautiful shine to them. I think their mattes blend well. I'm just not sure what it is that doesn't make me go for a Juvia's Place palette, but I would say formula wise, I don't have an issue with it. I think the formula is, is pretty great. I wish they would lay off the press glitter because I have gotten some six pans from them where they have put the press glitter in there. But let me say this about Juvia's Place press glitters. The Juvia's Place press glitters are a bit different from other press glitters. They're wet, like I'm putting it on right now, you're not gonna see any glitter fall off of my hand. It's sparkly, but it almost looks like foiled. So tied with Juvia's Place, is Nomad Cosmetics. Nomad Cosmetics is another brand. Have no issues with it. The mattes have, you know, they pack a punch to them. You can build them up. The shimmers have a sparkle to them that all shimmers don't have. And then they always have a shade that's like really cool. Like this shade is Big Bend. It's a really unique, purpley lavender taupe shade, which is really cool. So Nomad usually sneaks things like that into their palettes. So that was the America's Parks. And then 
This is the Fire and Ice palette, which was a really unique color story. Again, I, I really don't have anything negative to say about Juvia's Place or Nomad Cosmetics. I have had success making beautiful looks with both palettes like BH, Juvia's Place, Nomad. They're kind of in the same boat for me. I'm still trying to figure out what it is about Juvia's Place that makes me not grab for those palettes. In any case, those two brands were tied for the number eight spot. All right, y'all, this is where it started to get a little bit easier. Number seven is going to Alien Cosmetics. Now, Alien is, you know, in my, my top brands. What I really love about Alien are the shimmers. Now, in this palette, which is the Lore palette, you, there are five of the duochrome shades, which are gorgeous. And I also have in front of me Strawberry Milkshake, where these are just the regular, not just, but they're regular metallics. I mean, anything that has dual chrome, I'm, I'm gonna love. These are very soft and I love these because they're soft and sparkly, but when you change the base, you know, it, there's a whole different look that is created with these dual chrome shimmers. Her regular uh, metallics are also beautiful as well. And I've had no problem with the mattes. I have the Capricorn All Matte Palette, which has created some beautiful looks. So that matte formula has worked well for me. The metallics are just very pretty, very wet looking. As far as being user friendly, there is a little bit of a learning curve when you are working with dual chromes. Sometimes dual chromes can make your eye, you know, depending on the shift, you may not like that. I don't want to call it a dirty look, but I like that look, that grunginess, you know, that occurs where the shift may make it look a little muddy. And I enjoy that. I think it's neat. I'm like, how many colors do they have on? But everybody may not like that. As far as user friendliness, you know, the formula is great, but you just may struggle a little bit if you don't know what to do with color or with dual chromes or with like, if you want to change up the base. So Alien is number seven. Number six is going to Odin's Eye. I don't talk a lot about Odin's Eye, but every time I pull this palette out, I am always amazed at the eyeshadow formula. I really like Odin's Eye because they have a bit of a variety of with their shimmers. First of all, their mattes are, they're soft and they blend really, really nicely on the eye. The shimmers, some are a bit transparent, like topper type shimmers. So I know that you, you can barely see it, but it's super sparkly. And this would be a really great topper. In the same palette, you'll have like this blue one right here. And I really like that. Now I have, the three palettes from the Nons and the big one. That's all I have from Odin's Eye because these were the only color stories that really spoke to me. But the looks that I have created with these palettes are really, really beautiful. If you like sparkly shimmers, Odin's Eye is gonna be one for you. Some of the shimmers, as I said, are have a transparent base. Putting these shadows on a colored base or on top of a look that you already have can really transform the look. They also have a satiny formula that you can use like a matte as well. And I just don't have any uh, complaints. We gotta look at him and Annabelle. I think that if they were to come out with more color stories that I liked, I probably would have more from them, but their color stories aren't my favorite. So that's why I only have this one collection, but I really do like it nonetheless. All right, number five goes to, I'm gonna say Norvina. I was gonna say Anastasia Beverly Hills, but for some reason, I think that this is a better formula. Now, out of all of my Norvina palettes, this number five palette is the one that I've used the most. And I can say that I really like this formula. Um, these mattes feel softer to me 
they're really, really easy to blend. The shimmers are really pigmented and just they're just beautiful look how pretty that is i mean you just need to put that on one time and you are done you're done the silver in this palette is also just i mean it's just one little swipe i'm not you know doing a whole bunch i'm not rubbing my finger in it these mattes feel softer than the ones in the ABH palettes. When I started using these palettes, I found them hard to work with. I don't know why. It might have just been my skill level at the time. I just thought they were like powdery and hard to blend. And I think that may have just been my error, but this is the Sultry palette. And this one has some really beautiful shimmers too. So, you know, when I think of standout brands, uh, ABH slash Norvina is definitely one of them. Some of their palettes, like the Amarisi one, have like a little pressed glitter situation that I'm not super fond of. The Jackie Ina palette is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this at number five. I think they're user-friendly. I think they're pretty easy to blend. I think I like these better though. We're really gonna just put this at number five. Ooh, and it's Pro Pigment Palette number five. Number four is going to Pat McGrath. Don't y'all. Now, y'all know Pat McGrath is like my favorite brand. Her shadows blend themselves and they should. She has a variety of textures and she continues to innovate and create new textures. So why is she number four? <sighs> Believe it or not, y'all, and if you know me or been watching, I, I have said this before, I know a lot of us really, really love these special shades. I don't. I use them, but not as much as I feel like I should be using them. I would say I use some more than others. Like the Blitz Emerald shade is gorgeous. And I do see his feet, but I'm ignoring it. Like that's beautiful. This shade right here, and this is the Mothership 2 Sublime. I mean, they're beautiful, they are. But I, I don't reach for those that much. I'm not a big fan of the, what is this? The Skin Show shades. I don't know, I'm just not a huge fan. Some of her shadows, I feel like have gotten hard panned and I just don't know why. I love her mattes, I love her satins, and I love the metallics the most. And because of, you know, me not liking the, the special shades as much, I don't wear like these quads. Like this is Nocturnal Nirvana and I like a couple of the shades in here. Like this one is really nice. But this purple is, I don't know if mine is old, but it's just, I don't even know. It's like super dry. The one thing about the Pat McGrath shimmers, not these, but her other shimmers, I do like using them in the crease. I do like using them like mattes. But you know, when she has these quads that are all special shades, I find it a tad difficult for me personally to create a look. I always use these as companions. I'm just not a huge fan. Like I know some people wanted a new mothership of all special shades. And I definitely didn't want that. Oh, that'd just be too much for me. But they are gorgeous. So I'm not even going to act like they're not. They're beautiful, but they're, they're just not my favorite. Pat McGrath is in my top five brands. So there's more to the shadows that I like than the formula. You know, it's the vision, the inspiration, even though this inspiration seems a tad off. But, you know, I'm not Pat, so I don't know. But Pat McGrath is number four. Um, I do think that her eyeshadows are worth the price. I will say that. And I think they are user-friendly as well as pigmented. Number three goes to Kaleidos. Kaleidos just makes me smile. When I first purchased the Make Your Escape pod, I just, I really adore that palette and I still do. I have two of the, uh, I think it's Astro or Futurism palettes. This is one of them here. This is the Lunar Lavender. 
these these mats almost they feel like uh, Natasha Denona. They're buttery and they're creamy and they're just soft. And the way that they're swatching on my finger is the way that they work on your eye. No problems. They blend. They're not patchy. There's just no problem at all. The shimmers are sparkly. They have duo chromes. They have topper shades. Look at this. It is perfect, perfectly done. Every palette to me has been the same consistency. I could buy Kaleidos just with my eyes closed. I don't even have to think about it, don't even have to see it. That's why people were so excited about Flower Punk because a lot of people said that this side reminded them of Melt, but they didn't have to worry about guessing whether or not it was gonna be like good quality. And y'all know I'm not saying Melt isn't good quality, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that Melt sometimes is just hit or miss Whereas Kaleidos is a hit every time, every single time. It does not matter what color spectrum they're going with, the quality is the same. Club Nebula is another one, just one of the standout palettes uh, of the year. Very beautiful color story. These mattes feel the same, the shimmers feel the same. Their brand is just, it's just beautiful. Number two goes to Natasha Denona. Mm, I think these are one of my favorite mattes. I just love them. They're soft. They're like buttery. All the palettes that I have by her, the mattes perform the same way. The shimmers are beautiful as well. Look at that blue right there from Metropolis. But I think Natasha Denona is super easy, super easy. And uh, as I said, all of the palettes that I have by her have the same consistency, all of them. And she did, you know, do the duo chromes in the trio chrome palette. And even those were nice, you know, I'm not saying they're like Davina or Terra Moons or anything like that, but they were definitely beautiful, especially if you're new to shades like that. I just, I love this palette. I really love this palette a lot, I will say that. So, Natasha Denona is definitely the number two spot, which means that number one goes to none other than Sydney Grace. <sighs> Sydney Grace, I've said, is like an anchor in my eyeshadow collection. The first palette I bought from Sydney Grace was Tiny Marbles. I also have a ton of singles. Sydney Grace doesn't even seem to have a whole variety of textures, but what they have is just tried and true. You know what you're gonna get. It's not, you're not guessing, you're not hoping, it's just, you just know. This palette, you guys, the mattes are just, <sighs> Not to mention that Sydney Grace comes out with palettes where they switch the mattes and make them deeper for people of deeper skin tones. These are just some of the mattes from Tiny Marvels. But the shimmers! I just love metallics so much, like a good metallic. There is nothing like a good metallic, you know? And that one's a duochrome. The shimmers in the Temptalia palettes, they're just, they're just Sydney Grace. They just are like, this is what I expect every time, every time, nothing more, nothing less. I think that someone new to makeup could pick up a Sydney Grace single or palette and come up with something beautiful. The mattes, why they don't feel creamy like the Natasha Denona mattes or the Kaleidos mattes are just super blendable and they do not take much building up at all. The shimmers, you can use wet, you can use dry, as with most shimmers, but I think I use most of these as is. And this is what they look like on my arm. They look the same on my eye. They are affordable. 
They are consistent. I think that they have everything that an eyeshadow formula should have. I will be a fan for life, I'm certain, if as long as they keep doing what they are doing. I am so glad that I found out about this brand, which was when Mel Thompson did Tiny Marvels. And then from that, I just started getting singles. I bought Enduring Love, which is another one of my favorite palettes that kind of just snuck up on me. Oh, you're so sweet. Let me find this one show for y'all. Okay, I had to find my, um, my singles. Like, I got singles, okay? <sighs> okay, these are my shimmers. This shade right here called Tiara, y'all. Oh, I can't see. Like, this? I mean, there are just so many beautiful shades in their collection of singles. And you know that they also make the cream eyeshadows that um, they have metallics. There are some multi-chrome press. I don't even have those. There are some duo chrome cream shadows. <sighs> Just keep it up. Keep it up, Sydney Grace, because y'all have something special. And, and it's funny because as I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, but I think I like Pat McGrath as a brand more than Sydney Grace as a brand. But I don't know. I gotta, I gotta stick with, I gotta stick with Sydney Grace. We're gonna have to leave it at that, y'all. Sydney Grace is number one. As you probably know, because of how much eyeshadow I have, I did not include <laughs> lots of brands that you may have expected to hear. Jamie and I wanted to pick. 10 of the brands that were the same. So I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but thank you so much for taking some of your time and hanging out with me. Let me know what your favorites are. You don't have to do 15, but uh, are you are you in the boat with me? Like with the top five, top six, or like, do you totally disagree? Like I'm really excited to know because makeup is so personal. What someone doesn't like may be what someone else likes. So I, I love to do things like this. This is really fun for me. So again, thanks for sharing out some of your time with me. Please go check out Jamie's video when you're done with mine. And until I see you again, make sure you are being, he's trying, he's trying to milk this. Thing now until I see you again make sure you are being gentle with yourself talk to yourself nice stay safe and I will see you in the next one bye